One of the first things we learn about Y-hangs in rope access is that if we've got an angle in our Y-hang, then it changes the loading on the anchors. If I've got a 90 degree angle, which is nice and easy to see and to measure, it's square, I've got 100 kilos on the bottom, we're looking at about 71, just over 70 on either anchor point. So we've got 20 kilos on each side coming from nowhere and the bigger the angle, the bigger that extra load gets. If we get up to 100 kilos at 120 degrees this time, we're looking at 100 kilos on each side. Now the formula to work this out is fairly simple, works on a bit of trigonometry. We create a triangle on there, work out the, the lengths of the sides with a bit of cosine, and it gives us an answer like this. But that's not that much use out in reality. All of this stuff is based on the fact that the angles stay the same and the ropes don't stretch. So what we're going to do is have a look at a real situation where the ropes are stretching as we increase the load and the angles are changing and see what actually comes out rather than worrying about the theory. So we've got rigged up here a little horizontal line. We'll have a look at single lines to keep things simple first and then double lines to see how we can share the load later. But one of the first things we learn in rope access is to avoid hanging on wide angles in our rigging because it can multiply the forces and create big loads on the anchor point. So to measure that, we've got a load cell up at the top corner there and a little read out here so we can see what's going on. Um, just gonna use my body weight to start with, which is about 75, 76 kilos um, and we'll see what effect that has. When we're rigging a normal Y hang, the rule of thumb is pretty much keep the angle as low as possible. Um, up to about 90 degrees is a normal thing. Dead easy to see, easy to measure, and it makes sure the loads on the anchors are gonna be less than the load on the ropes. But if we need to, if we need to create um, either a system for horizontal access or get some ropes in the middle of an area where there are no anchor points, we're gonna be looking at wider angles so we've rigged this up initially, put a little bit of tension on it, and I'm just gonna have a sit on it, see what the angle is and see what the load is. I'm hanging just on a single point here. My feet are still on the floor, so no big deal. And we'll just measure the angle. So I've got a uh, nifty little app on my smartphone. Press start, if it's gonna start, move it over and stop. So that's about perfect. I've got 120 degrees there, which is ideal. That's the first example we want to look at. And you can see, if I take my feet off the floor, load on the anchor point is about 76 kilos, which is exactly my weight. So at 120 degrees, the load on each anchor point is equal to the weight of the operative hanging on the ropes. We call this the critical angle because at 120 degrees, I've got about 76 kilos on one end of my system. I weigh about 76 kilos, so that's 100% of my body weight. Below 120 degrees, we'll get less load than my body weight on either anchor, and at above 120 degrees, we'll have more weight than my body weight on either side. And the higher above 120 degrees we go, the faster that load starts to increase. So I've used a, a simple three to one pulley system just to put a bit more tension in the ropes. And we're almost at 140 degrees. Load read out. About 110. So it's creeping up steadily. We've put a bit more force through our three to one now. We haven't gone mad, but just pulled it pretty tight. And what we can see is that there's 45 kilos or so of tension in the line permanently before I start putting any weight down onto it. Now I'm hanging on it. So 
So, almost 150 degrees now, and if we look at the force, 142 kilos, I'm 76, so not far off twice my weight. Instead of a single line at 150 degrees now, what we've done is we've put another line in place, tried to put exactly the same amount of tension in. It's not perfect because we've only got one load cell, but we've got two lines, we've put a three to one on, crank them both up so that we're sharing the load. We've got two systems. Oh, that's good. So just by having two ropes instead of one, my weight's not pulling them down quite as much. The ropes aren't stretching quite as much. So we've got a slightly higher angle. This is where the math gets a bit complicated. You don't know whether the, the higher angle is gonna create bigger loads or whether because they're nicely shared across two ropes, we get nice low loads. So let's see what it is. Look at that, exactly 100. So back down to about 1.3 times my body weight. So if we were working, I would say this setup is about the maximum you wanna to go to. We've used a three to one, we've been fairly keen pulling that three to one in, the ropes are pretty tight, but we haven't gone mad and we've ended up with a load of 100 kilos on one system. That would be the same load will be on the other system, total load about 200 kilos on either end. But that's fine, it's PPE, it's personal protective equipment, it's designed for one person loads, 100 kilos is the, what they consider a one person load in the standards. So we're fine at this kind of setup. With just my weight on these ropes then, we had 100 kilos, which we considered fine for one person. So if it's fine for one person, it should be fine to double up if we need to and do a rescue with two of us. So next to me now, we've got clipped in a, a little wire turfer and that's got a 75 kilo sandbag hanging off the bottom. Again, about the same weight as me. With double the weight then, the ropes have stretched a bit more and we've come down to a slightly lower angle of a 145 degrees. The load on our single point though now with two people's weight in the middle of the lines, 154 kilos. So that's the highest load we've had so far. We're still well within the safe working load of the system, but it isn't something that you'd want to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. It should be for exceptional rescue use only. So for the final one, we've gone a bit wild with our nine to one hauling system. We've got it as tight as we can. Before I put any load on it, we had 150 kilos of tension just in the rope. Uh, and I've just popped on this second system. There's no tension in that. Um, just because we are exceeding the kind of safe limits of, of the system. So our angle now, 157, approaching 160 degrees. You see the angle starts to go up slower, but we should find the load starts to go up a bit more. And there we go, over, over 200 kilos now. So I'm, I'm only 76 kilos, so that's well over twice my body weight. So that's, that's pushing the safe working load of the system for one person, and there's certainly no way I'd be wanting to do a, a rescue, a two-person load on this kind of system. But if we bear in mind this is still only one system that's in tension, if we double it up like we had before, it's quite possible that we could have a system that's perfectly safe for one person. You find even with a nine to one, the stretch in these low stretch nylon ropes is enough that it's just really difficult to get over 160 degrees. So to some extent, the system does prevent you from getting into really dangerous territory but it's still worth knowing what you're doing. Just using a nine to one in itself is pushing the limits of the system. If I can get 
over 50 kilos into here, then nine times that, 450 kilos, that's enough for one of these toothed ascenders to start damaging the sheath of the rope. So it's not a system I would use normally anyway, it's uh, just not strong enough. We've gone back to the kind of system we recommend here. We've got two lines, more or less equally loaded. I'm on two connections and we've just pulled them hand tight. No pulleys, no jammers, just as much tension as you can get by hand. So when I'm not hanging on the ropes, there's not any residual tension left in them. They're tight, but there's no tension in them as such. The interesting thing is we're still at 150 degrees or so, so you're not really gaining anything by pulling the system really tight. You're not gaining any height, which is why people tend to do it. You're just making everything carry a lot more load. And having a look at the load cell, 80 kilos on the one item of gear at the end. So just my own weight on each item of kit in the system, which is ideal. That's what it's designed to be loaded at in a normal vertical situation. The other thing we haven't mentioned so far is dynamic loads. It's all very well if everything stays nice and still, but the problem with tension lines is if there's any sudden drops, if an item of gear does fail and, and we do drop slightly, then this angle here is gonna multiply the loads a lot. So if I try and bounce around a little bit, I don't know how well this will keep up. But we might see, yeah, we've got over 160 there, quite easily, and that's just me bouncing around. So if you imagine if I fell, um, if I was using a fall arrest back up in this situation, I would fall, instead of me being 70 kilos bouncing around, 76 kilos bouncing around, suddenly I'm gonna be like 500 kilos tearing a shock absorber, and the chances are you're gonna break things at the other end of this system. So. Rule of thumb with these systems, keep everything nice and steady, no sudden shock loads, no bouncing around, don't over tension the lines. To illustrate the effect that the rope stretch was having compared to something like wire which doesn't stretch, we've just rigged this little turfer up. If you haven't used one, a turfer is just a combination of a wire rope and a little winch unit and by cranking the handle, that one releases the, the rope and crank the other one and it just tensions it up. So we've got the load cell in at the other end and I'll just put a bit of gentle tension on and we see we go straight up to 60 kilos tension in the line. If you want to get these things tighter you can put on a little extension there but I don't want to go mad, that's fine. So this turfer uh, is one of the smaller ones, it's got a safe working load of 500 kilos. Okay so when we started with the rope and we had about 50 or so kilos tension in it, when I hung in the middle it it went up to, I forget already, but it was about 150. It, it didn't go up an enormous amount. Now with the turfer, if I just start to put my weight on, you can see I've still got most of my weight on my feet, straight up to about 300 kilos. And I'll just gently sit on the cable, and you can see very quickly we get up to some really big loads. So you've got to be really careful using these things very easy to overload your anchor points and damage equipment.